um, yesterday um, was just reflecting on a few a few points which reminded me of the stories of often as a child in the 80s there seemed to be this cliche of a lots of drama and at the end the the story is that it's actually all happening in a film and they all wake up realize it was all a dream and um, it was mentioned that this consciousness when the soul in those moments is awake it resolves the past because the past is also in the story and it resolves the future concerns that's also in the story and somehow that was really um, hitting home for me and when uh, that simple diagram of below the line and the l to depict lower consciousness above the line the h for the higher just to make it really really clear that when we're feeding the lower consciousness it's blocking the higher and um, every time we reduce the ego then it's followed by experiences of the happiness and peace and bliss of the higher consciousness in such a simple way but so helpful to be reminded and this aspect there's no rush to put the label of I onto the soul was very useful um, detail yesterday as well for me and we can just take a little time to see the soul to get those experiences and then that term soft identification was used and finally this atmosphere created by the perspective of Paris seeing the big picture seeing the drama is small is promoting an atmosphere for the soul to be revived so it'd be really nice to hear what was important for you and uh, as always to share in the chat would be very nice so i'm going to invite prashant to come into sound welcome and, uh, hello and uh, good morning It is uh, very sunny in Cambridge here, and nice to nice to meet again. Let us create one minute of uh, essence. <coughs> Ordinarily, there is so much expansion and the story itself is a huge expansion. Even our knowledge, there is uh, lots of details. We need to learn that and the expansion is part of this life. But it has to be balanced with the essence. And the essence is coming to the point. Soul. Deep inside, we want to know I exist and I am safe. This is what we all want to know. Everything everyone is doing is to survive. So here you are coming in clarity to discover you are immortal. So with the eye of the mind, we are seeing the soul. We are seeing it as a presence. soul sees itself. The presence in that expanse of light it is aware of the big story at a distance aware of God and uh, supreme personality of God and uh, 
bond, eternal bond of love with God knows of it, knows of the family of souls, <clears throat> knows the greatness of everyone. But right now, the focus is on the invisible presence. in this expanse of light, home. Knowing that this dimension is timeless and beyond harm forever. And he needs to know nothing else So please, safe, eternally safe. And its world is safe. Thank you. One, one, one institution that has got great respect in the present time, that is the science institution. And what is the one quality of the science? And their quality is accuracy. The whole methodology is they will try to understand properly and what is wrong, they will, they will not go there again and again. They will discard it, build on what is right, go further. <clears throat> That's why science brings results. Right now, we are meeting here from different corners of this planet because of science because the right wire is connected in the right place, then you get results. If that wire is gone to a, one wire is at the wrong place, <coughs> you will not get the results. Something similar at the spirituality level. It is a science, the whole subject of spirituality. And that in that I include religions. It's a system of science. It should bring big results. But big results will come if there is accuracy. If we remain a bit vague about the details and some important things, we know something is wrong, but still we we build on, on it or mix it with what is right, then you will not get the big results. Then that's what we call bhakti results. You know, so like religions, they don't expect big results. You know, some, and otherwise it would have been a very powerful institution. But um, religions are not bringing the results. Our aim is to bring in that accuracy. That's why we sometimes use the word Gyan Vigyan. Vigyan is a word used for science also, but we use it for yoga. It is going into the practicality of this in a most refined subject. 
in one gathering, you know, Baba asked the gathering, what's the difference between one who practices yoga and yogi? And a Raj yogi, not a physical Hatha yogi, but a yogi and one who practices yoga. What's the difference? You would like to answer? You can type. If there is a very clear answer you can think of, one person practices yoga and another one is a yogi. Baba says, here is a yogi and someone practices yoga. What's the difference? Are there any answers? Uh, lifestyle. Uh, the one that lives in clarity is a yogi. Um, one who practices, who goes from here to the home. The one who practices yoga goes from here to the home. Sure. Good. You know, Baba Sanskar was. <coughs> <clears throat> one who is a yogi, he lives there and comes here. He sees that that is his natural home. He's a guest here. He may be here for one day, maybe 100 years. But his natural feeling is, I have come here. I'm a guest. He belongs there. One who is practicing yoga, he feels he's here, he belongs here. And he goes there for five minutes. He goes there for some little meditation time. But even that he practices so that it can help him here in the body, blood pressure may come down and relations might get better job he might he might have less stress so it might help him you know getting more money so it is good to practice you know some others have told him that will meditation will help him nothing wrong but that is practicing yoga yogi is the one who lives there that is his world he, he thinks of that world. He lives for that world. So if I am to ask you further, who is a yogi? Who can ever be a yogi? From what we discussed yesterday. Some comments. Um, one who lives with Baba. The awake soul. Good, very, very good. Only the soul, only the soul who is conscious, soul that is awake, he feels he is from there. It is not Prashant who will become a yogi. Prashant is part of the story <clears throat> and that chapter finishes, Prashant part will be deleted, that episode will finish, the part is so superficial, but the soul that is conscious, he feels he's from there, he belongs to that home. He belongs to that father. That is his natural nature. Just as when you are in some country, you never forget that you are a tourist there. You have come from another country and you'll be going back there. You are thinking of your people in your home and in your country. In the same is the attitude of 
the one who is conscious. He, he feels internally, he is subtle, he is invisible, he is alarchic. And uh, visiting here, and this uh, everything is a gift for a few minutes, maybe a few years. He's a, he's a tourist. He's just watching these things, you go back. And his world is subtle, alarchic. Few words to, uh, to define our world. Our world is subtle, alarchic. Uh, translation would be unearthly. It is eternal. It is divine, invisible. But enough to know that that is natural. The um, more we make Paris stronger, this dimension has to become natural to us because that is what our world is. Divine, divine means this is a world of bliss and love and peace. Ravan free region, huge thing. Ravan free region, that is where we come from. I was going to read a short passage from the Murli. But Sarah, want to add anything or want to any thoughts? The question which came up just now, um, if it's possible to give um, some more description around the interaction of a yogi with the drama with some practical worldly examples. Life goes on. Just as when you are a tourist in some town, some place, you may be doing many things there also, but the attitude, inner attitude is of uh, detached involvement. You don't forget your world and you're not forgotten your time of departure. You're not forgotten, you are a guest. That is all. All that is happening in a yogi, there's an extra clarity. One who is not awake, he is in confusion, big confusion. He doesn't know even who he is. So that is the only extra factor. But because he is awake, in this way, <clears throat> he's connected to this, you know, region, you know, this is like a big lottery. Awake, he's awake to what? He's awake to this supreme truth. And uh, all around, you know, his involvement is coming from that all round understanding, higher understanding. <clears throat> Soul consciousness means this, you know, and we will get a chance to build on it. But even as we go through this morning, let us not lose sight that the soul is a guest. This is what we are holding on to. Other experiences will grow. Soul is a guest here, an invisible traveler and he has an exit. I asked one gathering, what is it that is really, you know, will help you to break this ego and body consciousness, to break the back of, that is what is required. Ego holds us into that gross level. And the answer was, Awareness of the exit, and that is so accurate. Just forgetting that there is an exit, it sort of gives us total permission to 
jump in this uh, story world with full ego. Ego is just a growth in it. The biggest ignorance is this, forgetting the exit, forgetting something that is obvious. It also means more we bring that awareness, remind us there is a guaranteed exit. And how absurd if there is an exit. It may be after 100 years even. How absurd to create attachments to anything. The reality is exit can be any second. But, you know, we like to believe that it is so far in the distance that it is as if we are here immortal, you know, in this way. That deceives us. So just a passage I'm reading. And this is from the Murli we read on 6th of September, just a week ago. <clears throat> Whilst each of you has everything, body, relations of your body, sanskars of the body, people, possessions, vibrations, atmosphere. Let none of them disturb you or pull you. This is called being victorious over attachment. Nashto moha. So do we have such a practice? There will be those who cry, you know, something happens, something breaks, fire comes. There will be those who cry, whereas you have to remain unshakable. No matter how much the elements, nature and maya come to make their final claim and pull you to themselves, you have to remain absorbed in the love of the Father, loving and detached. See, but do not see. Hear, but do not hear. Let there be such a practice. This is called the stage of being in the sweet silence form. You are given time to achieve this stage. If there is anything missing, you can fill in that gap now. So you now have a small chance and you therefore have to pay full attention to this practice. Whether you pass with honors or just pass depends on your, this practice. When the bell rings, check if you are ready or will you think that you have to get ready when the bell rings. Even the rosary of eight is based on this practice, based on this particular practice. So what is this practice? The word used is sweet silence. You may like to read that first page of the movie, you know, you will have access to the centers, the 6th of September. So uh, this is a equation for all of us. 
and this is a university in university there is a examination so everyone will be having this examination and and what happens in this examination you know this is what is mentioned here the examination will be a few seconds few minutes and this examination is final moment time of exit where is my attention that is what is checked here are you thinking of the your money are you thinking of some food are you thinking of people or is the final experience a sweet silence is the sky important for you or is the is the glitter more important to you? That is the examination. And this, this score decides your future. This applies to each and every one <clears throat> at the time of death through the cycle. What is your score at the time of death during these final seconds? This is why the tradition in uh, different cultures, they say, remember Ram, you know, take, the, take the name of Ram, take this water of Ganges, you know, um, the priest comes and priest reads the Bible. This is the tradition. But the final, final thought will not be based upon the priest. It will be based upon what has been important during your life. Priest cannot change. <clears throat> and I got a message, translators. And I will speak a bit slower. Thank you. So here we are seeing our our examination in you know, why some will have difficulty or what is it that causes difficulty at the final moment we said that there is uh, if it is a yogi for a yogi this world is important for him He's just a tourist, he has no attachments in this world, then it's a yogi, of course. And the final moments, he knows beforehand he has to go just like a guest. Guest is aware very much of his exit. He has not created and he has not tied himself into the world in where he has gone. If he has to go a day early, he, no problem. You know, he is ready to leave. He is happy to come back to his home, to back to his people. But one who has forgotten his home completely, and his whole life is getting trapped in this. More, 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 his happiness is, look at this, my position here, and my people here, my children, grandchildren, and my <clears throat> gold, all this, my hair, my, my. And I'm going to eat another, what, another cake tomorrow, you know, so he's thinking about his, you know, today I had enough cakes, but I won't eat more. If I can live a bit longer, I will be able to eat more. So this is his idea. And then there's the examination. What will he remember? Will he remember Ram at that time? <laughs> or will he remember his cakes or gold? But this is what we all have to check. What is happening? What will be the score? for ourselves in spite of knowledge and all. Knowledge doesn't mean you know 100% score. 
knowledge orients us, but old habits are different. And we saw that these 10 heads of Ravan, they, what are these heads? They trap you in, in this world in different ways. Just like we give the example, one head wants cigarettes. It is trapping the soul with, uh, with chemical, just something like cigarette. Another head is trapped with people. Some relations is trapped, another head. Another head is trapped with the position, created some ego burst based on position. Another head is based with the possessions. Look at my amazing achievements. All this is mine, this is land is mine. So different heads of Ravana are trapped here and they are still make, want to be, become bigger. So as the Ravana's heads are bigger, score will not be very high. Last minute you are pulled into the, these things. You will not be remembering Ram. And you are, your truth is not important to you. But this matters in a big way. This influences our present life also. Because Ravan is in the system. How can you experience that? That state we, we said, you know, divine and alokic and eternal, that world of bliss. This life itself, you are, one is limping with ignorance, but it affects the future. So the preparation, you know, to pass this exam, we, on one hand, we are understanding the sky, understanding God, but on the other hand, we have to dismantle these heads of Ravan. This has to be removed. Some attention is required here. In the subtle checking that you are not, mind is not dangling in sense objects, sense pleasures, but what is legitimate for us is super sensuous experiences. That's what the guest attitude. So let us create some minutes of that experience. Just an orientation, what we spoke so far. And during these minutes, we are creating a few minutes, experiments, prayog. Some sketch like that is useful or the sketch that you see in front of you, whatever that helps. If you want some words help you, write those words on, on your board at home. You know, like the word guest, for example, or invisible traveler, or detached involvement. So all these words are useful, worth writing them down, because they trigger the experience. <clears throat> and we are reminding that we have the option of virus. This is the first step for us. Anytime we are going for this life of a yogi, check, start with the virus. Why? Because Paris changes the game completely. Like a game changer. In one second, we understand the story as story. We see the temporary nature of everything in the story. And we can see 
Prashanti is the one little character within that story. <clears throat> the whole story itself is not worth a penny. And within that is Prashant. So you are seeing the irrelevance of the whole thing. Even for a few minutes, we hold on to Paras in a proper way. Not just use the word Paras and, and stay within the pot. No. Paras means you are out of this story. Out of ignorance. And behind this uh, story is a reality. Behind any story is a reality. And in the real world, there are real beings. We call them souls. They look like stars. But most important, these are beings of bliss and peace, and beings of love. They are divine beings. We call them souls. This is a Ravan free region, which means they don't have the concept even of desire or disappointment. These are beings of innocence and they are harmless in an absolute way. That's why beings of love. They are worthy of love and they are loving. They are worthy to be loved by God. God-like beings. They are childlike, God-like. That makes this home. In this home, there is no vibration. Anything inauspicious. So what remains is that vibration of bliss. We call it supreme home for a reason. We are just seeing this uh, dimension behind the story. This is the home of the father. We are talking about God. Also a soul, Paramatma. So Atma is also a soul, presence, but one who is parasnat, always paras, always in truth, natural. It is a huge thing, one who is in truth, always. So he sees the story for what it is. Truth always means he doesn't compromise. If he knows it's the story, he is not having any complaints about the story, or he has no questions about the story. It's the story, full stop. He knows the real beings behind the story. He knows the family of souls. He 
he knows they are like him. And they belong to him. He's a family. He knows this. He knows all are immensely lovely. That's why that expression, each one is lovelier than the next. He stays in this truth. That's all. When you are in truth, then automatically he becomes the holiest. No, no option of Ravani. No trace of Ravani. It's by holiest. It means holiest, highest, wisest. But he's also loveliest. He loves. And that's why he has active plants to give benefit. It's a big, beautiful combination. He loves <clears throat> immensely. He loves the souls. He's wisest. He's not trying to trying to help Cinderella, but he knows the real people. So he is loves, but there's also wisdom. And he is also the most powerful. He is able to help. We are just seeing the big truth that exists. This environment, this environment of the sky, if we call it Paris environment, more of our thoughts are experiencing this. This Paris environment favors the soul and helps the soul become conscious. And that is the milestone we are looking for. The soul becomes conscious. Just like someone is coming out of the dream and then he doesn't need to be told anymore you know, that who you are or where your home is. He understands who he is. He experiences that wonder of this truth. He understands his immortality. <clears throat> he understands the freedom from the story. He understands there is a great story, but there is a story. Story is story. 
for the awake soul is a story. For ego, it is not a story. For ego, petty things matter because his life is in pettiness, ego. As we continue on our journey, we aim to remember this option. All we have done is use virus and one leads to the next, one leads to the next. I think we'll be making rooms sometime soon and then we'll meet later. The theme of using Paris, would that be some focus for the discussion? Yeah, that's very good. Yogi and uh, yoga, that is another. A yogi and the one who practices yoga. Mm -hmm. Great. So, um, invitation to come into camera during the rooms if you're able to, and um, giving a chance for everyone to share. Someone may be coordinating in the group. And we'll meet back in around 10 minutes. Also, is it a good time to tell about our uh, session with Didi Sudesh today? Yes, that's true. It's a good time. Um, after the groups, we'll meet back. We'll have some time again with Prashant. And then at half past 11, we'll be um, joined by uh, Sudesh Didi, who will be sharing her thoughts on this subject, and there will also be a chance for some questions as well for her. So. Those who don't, they have not met Sudesh Didi, uh, she is uh, Rajyogi since 1950s. So, any of you were not born then, <laughs> so she has been for more than 50. 60 years, looks like. So with lots of experience. She's in London at the moment and she's able to join us. Okay, see you back in around 10 minutes. If you're not um, planning to join, you can just click later. And we'll see you shortly.
all are coming back. This um, slightly not elegant system of just coming rushing back, but good reminder of end. Um, we can create maybe a moment of um, silence together. Thank you. And um, welcome back. And perhaps we'll have a chance for some reflections from Prashant and also a chance to hear your comments and any questions. I think Prashant just needs to unmute. I think there is a question, um, some comments in the chat. What do you mean exactly by end? Exit, rather, sorry. <laughs> in my mind, it means the same. Um, what do you mean exactly when you say exit? Just like in any, any guest. Uh, visits a house, there's a time he enters, time he leaves. That experience comes to an end, and that is the exit. So also, in when we are seeing the bigger map, the invisible traveler comes in this physical world, there's a moment this experience begins. And there is a time this experience comes to an end. The physical world, this body, this life, this comes to an end. And uh, there is an exit. We are not using the word death. No one dies. You know, but uh, there is definitely, guest definitely leaves this place. It is a guaranteed exit. But uh, uh, when we are in stone intellect, we are into some kind of a denial, like extraordinary. Where affected, we create attachment.
There is no sound heard. Om Shanti. So there is some technical problem. So we are waiting Sarah and uh, Prashant to come back. Just got a message from Sarah. So maybe uh, while we are waiting for Prashant and Sarah to come back, just sharing some from our discussion about yogi and yoga. And um, it was uh, very nice to know that when we get caught in the drama, the feeling is completely different. And what a difference it is when we get the experience of uh, um, that the soul world is our world. And uh, that's when the whole, how could I say, the real meditation starts, that uh, we can really experience that that's the real world. And um, also, I want to tell my personal experience, I just had a dream that we shouldn't be careless about small things here and that in our world, you know, every time we are more involved with this body conscious world, it also blocks our intellect. And um, that was, um, that was very clear, a bit scary also. So, uh, uh, so good that we are all together here practicing being soul conscious. And now I can see that Sarah is back here. Welcome from the silence. Sally, can you hear Sarah somewhere? I thought Sarah came. No. I, I see a, a comment from Belinda. Tell a little more of the dream. It was very scary, or actually very beautiful, because um, it really tells that we shouldn't be careless about, uh, um, oh, it's a little time, um, I'm reading news a little bit more, or I'm doing something um, not so soul conscious. But in that dream, I got a feeling that it, it not only 
we are not experiencing the soul that moment, but it also blocks our intellect that it will be more difficult to uh, make that uh, make that um, connection. So for me, it was a great dream of a reminder to use our time well. I'm just wondering. Okay, so some problem with the with the internet. Um, so uh, you want to share some comments in the in the chat? It was a little uh, surprise sharing here, but uh, I'm in a good company with my sisters and brothers. And with this, um, being a yogi and the one who has yoga, I think it's um, very good to remember that the one who is having yoga is someone who is minding his or her business and then every now and then goes and meditates. Wow, I had 20 minutes meditation. And the one who is yogi is truly the one who spends all the time in the soul world and uh, just visits here in the drama. So it kind of goes like the opposite. And uh, we know that it's a bit challenging to uh, really put it into practice. So I can see, welcome Prashant. <laughs> and uh, Prashant would like to unmute. something. Uh, for some reason, uh, present we don't hear you now. Uh, now, now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you, you might like to complete what you were. It was very nice. Um, I think I was just rambling a little bit about being a yogi and having yoga, but uh, as a final, uh, it's so wonderful to practice together to be to be in that beautiful soul world. Yes. Oh, nice. thank, you. thank you. Any other uh, uh, thoughts? Uh, just one aspect I want to add, and before Sudeshdi joins us, I just want to remind. We are using this uh, language, you know, waking up, becoming soul conscious. This dimension of the soul, this is like a, the word supreme is used for this, supreme reality. Our yoga is like waking up to this and just seeing this supreme reality. And it starts with the self. The soul itself is a big thing. We are talking about someone who is immortal, someone who is made of peace, love, bliss. These are big things. Someone who is from the family of God. So that region this is a region of God to start with. One is praying to God, having statue of God. And here, in God, company of God, and taking 
power from God. Results, you see the results. At the immediate level, you become free from maya and attachments, and vices, make this, these are big demons, you become free from them. But this is also a region supreme, where there is no vibration of anything auspicious. Just even, just once you know this, you are experiencing this. If Ravan is not there, there is no reason for anything inauspicious. And so what remains is just this silent innocence and childlike experiences. You are immortal. You don't even need anything. No preference, no demands. All this energy, Ravan's energy, is not there. So whether we call it world of immortality, world of truth, compare that life to the life that is ordinarily led when we are, you know, not a yogi, then the life is constant ego. It is ego is running the life, constant desires. We feel like almost guilty not to create a desire. Constant some undercurrent of disappointment, some kind of a sorrow. You know, we use that expression, mind of a victim and a beggar. See the contrast that is happening here. And that little attention, all you are doing is getting this one step and coming out of this, of this ignorance, one step of soul waking up. Excellent. You might like to say anything or ask anything. I don't know if Gite has any other questions that came up when we were out of the Zoom drama. Um, it didn't, uh, don't have those notes. It's good to see how everything continues on, that the role is dispensable, it's useful. <laughs> yes, I think uh, the internet got frozen when uh, Prashant was sharing about the exit. So I think there are many who would still like to hear that answer. Yes, you know, so we were uh, on that subject, we were saying a guest comes, guest leaves. In the same way, in this world, there is an exit. And, uh, and we were saying, it is amazing. The Iron Age, we don't know to think of it. We think by not questioning it, somehow we have solved it. But clever, uh, the wisest thing we can do is face it. In other words, understand, try and understand this area. There is a guaranteed exit. That is there. And once you have understood this, you realize you can enjoy your world. You enjoy, guest enjoys his home, enjoys the place where he's a guest. It is nicely put, you know, those who die, before they die, they don't die when they die. It may be a bit difficult for translators. <laughs> but in a sense, you know, we have to face this exit beforehand. 
will be meeting Sudesh Didi sometime soon and uh, I might have, we, we may have to check if they have, Sudesh Didi has joined already. No, I don't think so. There was a question. Um, it's a, it's a, just a question around the definition of Paris. Um, but maybe before that, just a little bit more on this subject, Dolly is asking, is exit end of the life or is exit being soul conscious? Exit is uh, just the end of one experience. This, this is the way a yogi sees. You know, you go to one room, you come out of the room. It is not the end of life, but you, that, that particular experience comes to an end. But what has happened when you are in that room, you create attachments and attachments and attachments, then you will have sorrow when you are coming out of the room. And the one who is sensible knows one experience finishes, another experience starts. He is not attached to any experience, but remains the observer of the whole thing. Then for him, everything is a gift. Like even those who go on a roller coaster, they see it as a gift. They don't complain. It is, they pay money to go into this experience. because these are experiences and they come to an end and another experience starts. So this journey for the soul, this journey in the life and another life, it's a nice roller coaster. It's really helpful definition. Om Shanti. Hello, Om Shanti. Warm Om. welcome, Didi Sir. Yeah. Just give me three minutes because I have something else to do and I come back. It is. It will remain as it is, but I just wanted to check that it's okay, it's fine. Just only let me put the, the picture as well. Sure. Brilliant. Well done. Thank you. Yeah. We'll okay. See you in a couple of minutes. Very nice. Fine. Yes, very good. Maybe Baba is visible. <laughs> <laughs> Are you you already now? Now in three minutes. Three minutes. Very good. Okay. Prashant, shall we give you another question? Yes. This one was um, just a clarification about Paris. Is it part of Akash? So you might like to translate that for the non-Hindi speakers. Is it part of Akash as another dimension or is it another name for it? Could you just elaborate? Paris. Sure. You know, Paris is intellect. You know, that is the way we are using it. Paris buddhi. And let us take an example, there's the elephant. And a blind person goes and sees the elephant and he can see the, touch the tail. And for him, the tail is the elephant. And he tells, you know, how the elephant is, he comes and tells others of the elephant, but he has only seen the tail or touched the tail. <clears throat> Another person sees the whole elephant sees the forest behind the elephant, sees the man looking after the elephant, sees the context, understands what it is all about. His understanding is different to the blind person. So at present, when we are not using the paras, we are like blind person. We are dealing with this story but we are seeing it as, as if it is everything, you know, we are caught into, we think this is the elephant. What we are touching is just a tail. When we use paras, it is almost like a sight. 
but it is we use the word with the meaning of intellect. And then you are seeing that there is the story and there is the world behind and there are these invisible actors and there is the family, there is God. There is an amazing reality behind. And in the context, story is also nice as it comes. In the story, there is a dragon and in the story, there is a hero and it, the episode comes to an end, another episode starts. You are now understanding, you are not complaining about the dragon. All that has happened is you are seeing the bigger map. So when we are using paras, this what is subtle and allotic, that becomes normal. The big map, you are able to see the big map. You can grasp immortality and eternity in a natural way with paras. But see also the story and understand what it is. Thank you. I, I see Sudeshdiji is here, so yeah, very welcome. Uh, now continue. Let's. I I'm also interested to listen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it was just uh, uh, finished. Also, you know, <laughs> we just finished. Um, Shanti, and um, we have this uh, privilege to uh, welcome Didi Sudesh, and obviously behind is Baba, so we're also looking at Baba, we're looking at Didi, the form. <laughs> Prashant gave a little introduction earlier, but you have, uh, I think, maybe 60 years of experiences. <laughs> you can share more. Mm -hmm. And um, we thought we would start with some um, some drishti, some meditation and seeing the soul, uh, silence meditation for a few minutes. So if anyone wishes, you can uh, put the camera on and it's just like a chance for us to be together. And then after that, we'll, we'll hear from uh, Didi Sudesh, her reflections on this subject. So let's have some silence together with Didi. Thank you.
Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Still good morning. It's still morning time. I would welcome all those who are present and congratulate those who are experiencing this retreat called Sanjeevani. I think Prashant Bhai would have also already told you the meaning of Sanjeevani. Sanjeevani, I do not know what he told you according to his experience, but my experience of Sanjeevani is based on once again becoming conscious. There's a story that Lakshman, a soul like me and you, his name was, he was focused on his goal, connected with his aim and object, and that was constant companionship with God day and night, protection as well as humble server. On one side was he considered himself to be a guard, other side he, he considered himself to be companion at the time of goodness you are with God. At the time of difficulty, you are with God. And mind is focused on the aim and object is at this man manabhav. So in the battlefield, there comes a story in, in the, the story of this character is that once he became very much con conscious of his, that he is, is very elevated, he's super, compared to an ordinary person. So he forgot that he was a humble person and he rejected or avoided the humility, love, offer with, with very simplicity, some, some offering from the heart as respect. But he considered this is not, a, this is not according to my standard. So he rejected that or avoided that to accept that. So his humility, his aim was to be humble. And some one percentage or whatever percentage came, his ego came in of superiority, inferiority complex and superiority complex. And that made him unconscious. What we call it now, he was then hit by his own 
ego, which came from somewhere else, but it was the coming back, this karmic account that he created with himself, and he became unconscious. And when he became unconscious, it was that no one can wake him up. Nothing can help unless he gets the life, he gets the life giving herb. A herbalist had come. He was a great Rishi, a holy man. He said that only this herb can, if he smells this, goes in his physical system, he will wake up. So now who could bring that? It was up high again because ego had hit him and this Sanjeevani Bhuti was also from a high mountain to go on a very highest goal to get this life-giving herb to awaken him. So then a character called Hanuman, the destroyer of Abhiman, destroyer of name and fame, destroyer of ego. He had love for God and as Lakshman was brother of God, server of also God, companion of God, he said, okay, I go. And this Hanuman, destroyer of his ego, flew up of the mountain and brought this life-giving herb along with the mountain itself because he did not know which part of this herb, root or the leaves or the flower, what would be the practical thing for him for to bring him life again. So he brought the whole mountain along with this plant called Sanjeevani Bhuti, life-giving herb, life-giving plant. And as soon as he smelled that, he woke up again. And this is the story of all of us, not only one, it is the story of regaining consciousness because he did not die, he was unconscious. And so we are also at the level of totally unconscious in the dark night. And this condition was before the night finishes. It was just night was about to finish before the day finish, before the darkness comes again. So anyway, the, the our light, the story is that we need to wake up again and we woke up again by this life giving her. So you are given through this retreat a life giving her. And what is that? Sanjeevani Bhuti. New life, new consciousness, new awareness, new realization, new relationship. As an unconscious life. Lakshman was not conscious at all that he has forgotten his humility. He has forgotten his relationship in unconscious personality, in unconscious state of mind. We have, it is there still relationship remains, property remains, all our qualities are still in us. But when we are unconscious, we forget everything. And this is what it is. As we are children of God, we are Pandavas, companions of God. But as soon as we become body conscious, I am superior and you are inferior. I am great and you are nothing. I am clever, you are stupid. So when we begin to just compare our specialities with the weakness of others, very gently, very silently, an incognito way, gradually, our conscious goes to sleep. That real consciousness of who am I, 
what am I? And this is why it is called awakening. And this awakening, because when we went to sleep, it is said death and sleep are equal. When you are in death, this is a, in Hindi saying, death, dead person and sleep are equal because there's no consciousness. The body is there, but soul is not connected with external activity. But still, like the soul, when the person is dead, it's a, in other people's mind is also all his personality is visible, his memory is there. And in the soul, that qualities and personalities are still there from the past. And so we have not forgotten, we have not lost those qualities, but we became unconscious. And when we became unconscious, we forgot to use our qualities. We did not remain conscious. So we are in this body, we were living, but we were living in this world as Baba expresses in the Murli, that this world has become a graveyard. Graveyard means that the soul in the body is not aware I am a soul. Body is all the time, we are conscious of the body. And mobile graveyard means moving, walking, talking around. It's just like, I am not a soul, I'm only the body. The soul has left the body. And so here we have forgotten the body. Now we, we, we have forgotten ourselves, the soul, and we begin to identify ourselves with the body. And body does not have relationship with God. And that's why it becomes a, a mobile graveyard. Though the soul is in the body, but it has no connection with its own consciousness, a pure relationship with matter, perfect relationship with God, elevated and divine relationship with people. It's they all, everything is just like switched off. We became unconscious. Unconscious of our divine, original, eternal qualities of the soul. And so this is why what you learned in your first lesson, that you are a soul. What are you learning in meditation, practicing, hearing in commentary, again and again? I am a pure and peaceful soul. I am a living energy. I'm child of the Supreme Soul. So, this relationship again, awareness again, remembrance again, and then this life, new life, expressing with the new energy, living in companionship with God, as a new life. So it's called Sanjeevani. Newness in life comes by having not only just the awareness. Awareness is only first step. Awareness is just, yes, I am aware something is there. I'm aware that I, this is body. And so I, the human being, became human first being afterwards. The, a being, that human being, so I was being, and I became more aware of human, because you learned, you understood, trained yourself in your childhood. You are a girl, you are a boy. This is called awareness of matter, awareness of the body. The more and more awareness came in, we became more body conscious. We started to become, un become unconscious of our own true self, of the soul. And so that's why what is regaining this new life, Sanjeevani Bhuti, reawakening, 
is soul consciousness. And so, what is awareness? What is soul consciousness? What is remembrance? What is yoga? What is pilgrimage of remembrance? This we can have in this next few minutes in meditation. Okay. Om Shanti. You have trained yourself to sit relaxed, becoming aware, become aware of who am I, knowing the difference between I have a soul. This is awareness, the soul and body awareness of two things. But now it is difference between I have a soul and I am a soul. So being rather than just first being human, First, being a being, just be a living being, be a pure being, be a being of light. I'm just a point of light. Seated in the center of my forehead. That's my question. I have adopted this physical question to express myself and experience myself. Experience myself first. I myself, I, the living energy, think of my eternal and original qualities. Which is latent in me. With full potential of peace. of truth. Of love. Of purity. Divinity. Bliss.
and being of light, an eternal being, a living seed of light. A thinking being, as I think, so shall I become. I think of peace. and feel it. I'm consciously rethinking, reminding myself bringing the thought again and again in my mind. I am. A pure and peaceful soul. Thoughts and feelings are merging in each other. Feelings are more powerful. My feelings are affecting my breathing system. I breathe in with deep feelings of peace. I breathe out with great joy, blissful feeling, thoughts are filled with joy. Purity and peace are my natural property. I'm 
I hold on these feelings a bliss, peace, and purity. As I breathe in, I breathe in with the quality filled with love, peace, joy. As I breathe out, I vibrate these qualities. My mind and body are in harmony. I believe, I experience, this is what I am. I am a pure and peaceful soul. A living being, pure being, loving being, blissful being. I am a soul. I realize I'm child of the supreme soul, the benevolent being. Now qualities of the soul begins to be connected with the Supreme Soul. This relationship of the soul, conscious soul, peaceful soul, pure soul, connects me with the Supreme Soul. This is yoga. Natural yoga, relationship with the Supreme Being. I belong to the Supreme. The eternal truth. Benevolent being. Blissful being. Satyam Shivam Sundaram. Truth, benevolent, 
beautiful. This is a beautiful relationship. Benevolent relationship. Belonging to the Supreme Soul. This joy of belonging brings end to the longing Longing for a long period of time. Of truth. Now I realize I am a pure and peaceful soul. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Thank you. Shanti. Oh, Shanti. Shanti. If anyone wishes to wish Didi Shanti before we finish, and then we'll close and meet again tomorrow. Thank you. Anyone would like to unmute and you can say Om Shanti and hello to Didi. Thank you, Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Om Shanti.